This isn't a promotion or business pitch, just a personal story of struggle and triumph. Many of my friends have faced similar challenges, and I hope by sharing how I overcame mine, it might help you too. At 70 years old, standing 5 feet 3 inches and weighing 200 pounds, I live with a permanent disability and chronic back pain. I reached a point where I could no longer clean my house. My husband took over all my responsibilities, cooking, cleaning, shopping, and even hired a house cleaner. I found myself increasingly contemplating the end, wondering if it would come sooner or later. I thought about how I had already outlived my father, who passed away at 65. My grandmother died at 72, and while I wasn't there yet, I figured I might make it that far. My mother lived to 85, but I doubted I'd reach that age. Then, something within me shifted. I remembered taking my mother on a vacation to Italy when she was well past 70. What am I doing? I thought. Get up and do something, just like you always have. So, I gave myself a mental push and decided it was time to take action. For weeks later, I stepped on the scale, and it read 178 pounds. I was walking, standing, and going about my daily tasks as usual. Was it hard? Not really, no harder than any other chore, as long as I set my mind to it. This isn't the first time I've taken my health into my own hands after doctors had given up on me. Each time I did, my efforts were rewarded with wonderful results. I have many friends facing similar challenges, and I've tried to share my story with them. Unfortunately, they often don't listen, dismissing my experience as just another tale like all the others. They assume it's too difficult, not for them, or that their condition is too different to benefit from my approach, so they don't even consider trying. Growing up in the Soviet Union, sports were only for top performers, and I wasn't one of them. After a brief attempt at gymnastics, where I felt discouraged, I left and avoided sports for years. However, at 24, I faced a significant health problem. For five years, I was treated by the best doctor in the city because I struggled to get pregnant. At the end of the fifth year, he told me I'd never have children. But I refused to give up. I learned the right exercises for my abdominal organs, worked out religiously every day, and a year later, I had my miracle child. That was my first experience that showed me how important exercise is. But, being unaccustomed to sports, this experience wasn't enough to keep me exercising regularly. When I immigrated to America and discovered the abundance of sports clubs, I signed up but always found excuses not to go. I was self-conscious, overweight, surrounded by fit, beautiful people. The gym was a challenging environment for me, both physically and emotionally. Yet, I knew deep down that I had to keep going. And I did, but only with a girlfriend to feel a little more at ease. Like many, I struggled with my weight throughout my life. While my friends could eat whatever they wanted, my body seemed to expand with every bite, and my weight fluctuated between 175 and 185 pounds. I tried various diets and even resorted to pills, but nothing offered lasting results. My waistline would always disappear after visits home, where resisting my mother's cooking was impossible. I tried hiring trainers, but they either pushed me too hard or didn't challenge me enough, leaving me frustrated and without results. Despite this, my husband and I had a nightly routine of walking for two hours before bed which helped keep us in shape. However, over time, I started to experience back pain that worsened until I couldn't walk for more than a few minutes at a time. I ended up sitting at the computer, mindlessly snacking with the fridge just a few steps away. Two months later, I realized my reflection was starting to hog all the space in the mirror, and the scale chimed in with a cheerful 200 pounds. I joked to myself, well, at least my wrinkles are gone, and my face looks fantastic. But deep down, I knew my sedentary routine had turned into a permanent, 
unhealthy habit. The doctor reviewed my x-rays and told me, your spine is under stress, and without enough muscle, your extra weight from fat is making it worse. He advised me not to lift any weight, to avoid yoga classes, and prescribed a shot in my spine to temporarily reduce the pain. He also mentioned that I would likely need to return for this shot every three to six months for the rest of my life. I left the doctor's office feeling incredibly guilty. The image of my x-ray, displaying the massive amount of fat surrounding my body, lingered in my mind. My mom also struggled with weight, peaking at 230 pounds. She later lost 50 pounds, and at 75, I was amazed to see her walking with the energy of someone much younger. Sadly, she eventually gained it back in a nursing home for Alzheimer's patients and became unable to get up from her chair. I realized that my weight story wasn't much different from my mom's. It was easy to give up, sit all day in front of the computer or TV, watch movies, play video games, and keep picking snacks from the fridge as I watched my reflection slowly take up more and more real estate in the mirror. I could have let my husband take care of everything, but then what would happen to the garden I planted and nurtured with so much love? The fruit would rot on the trees, and my carefully tended decorative plants would be overtaken by weeds. And what about my choir? Lately, I found myself sitting during rehearsals with a few other elderly women. It's always a struggle for them to get on the risers and stand during performances. It's just not fun anymore. My husband once put a lock on the fridge, telling me he'd unlock it only three times a day. Furious, I gave him the silent treatment until he removed it. It was hilarious, I even sent a picture to my friends, and we had a good laugh. In hindsight, I realize now that my husband had the right idea all along. Controlling my diet and exercising was the only way to regain my life. To stop my habit of snacking every 30 minutes, I asked my husband for help. Once I promised to be a good girl, the lock was back on the fridge. My urge to snack didn't disappear overnight, though. Every time my feet carried me into the kitchen, I'd see that lock and glance at the clock. Two more hours. I'd think irritably, mutter a silent curse, and leave the kitchen. My current diet includes kefir, berries, green salads, which I eat in any quantity, broiled vegetables, no potatoes, and protein occasionally, along with fruit every other day and rice cakes. I even came up with a delicious dessert that's only 67 calories. I learned that passion fruit suppresses appetite, so I planted it in my garden last year, and this year, I harvested my first batch. My favorite treat is spreading a tablespoon of yogurt on a rice cake, topping it with passion fruit. It's like being in seventh heaven. Sometimes, I substitute passion fruit with sliced strawberries or other berries. It took about a month to get used to my new diet, and once the lock was off the fridge, I was able to stay disciplined. Around the same time, I made the decision to start going to the gym. I realized I'd been sitting for too long and couldn't even do basic tasks anymore. To rebuild my strength, I needed to hit the gym, even though I wasn't accustomed to exercising. But what would I do there? I couldn't walk for long periods, and I couldn't lift weights. So, I had to figure out what exercises my body could handle. Entering the gym, I felt uncomfortable, surrounded by younger, fitter people but I reminded myself to focus on my journey. The entire first floor was filled with various exercise machines, and I noticed an elderly man using one. I had seen these machines before but always assumed they weren't for me, so I never approached them. None of the trainers I had hired introduced me to them either. I decided to take a closer look. I walked through the machines, read the descriptions on each one, and took pictures with my phone. The next day, I went to my doctor and asked if I could use them. He approved most of them, with just a few exceptions. I discovered that most of these machines involved sitting, and each targeted a specific muscle group. My first day at the gym was tough, 
filled with disappointment and embarrassment. I could barely use the machines, even with the minimum weight of 10 pounds. Some machines I couldn't use at all. But I did what I could, managing to stick with it for 25 minutes. I didn't need external encouragement, my motivation came from the image of my x-ray burned into my mind. Despite the struggles, I left the gym feeling determined to return. I even felt a little happy and excited. You know, I told my husband as we walked back to the car, I feel like I just had so much fun on different arcade machines. Every machine is different, I can adjust it to my size, set any weight I want, and use it as long as I want. No competition, no judging eyes. I can go at my own pace. I genuinely love it. It's fun. I started going to the gym regularly. Within a month, I increased the weights on the machines to 35 pounds and was able to use the ones I initially couldn't. I'm down to 178 pounds, lifting 55 pounds with my arms, 95 pounds on the abdominal machine, and 190 pounds with my legs. Now, I'm back to taking care of my garden, standing during choir rehearsals, and even giving my house cleaner a break by managing my own chores again. I look and feel fantastic. My back problem is still there, and I haven't turned back the clock on aging, but I feel young again, like a million bucks. Looking back, I can't believe how far I've come. Three months ago, I was glued to the couch, believing that my best days were behind me. Now, I'm back in the garden, taking care of my plants, cleaning my own house, and standing confidently in front of the mirror. It wasn't easy at first, I had to fight through the urge to snack, the discomfort at the gym, and the doubt in my mind. But I've learned that it's not about perfection, it's about persistence. One step, one decision, one healthier habit at a time, it all adds up. I've regained control of my life, and it feels incredible. Each step I took toward health, no matter how small, brought me closer to the life I thought I'd lost and that feeling is worth every effort. For many people, the hardest part is simply starting. If you're struggling with excess weight or feel stuck, remember that you're not alone. Unfortunately, the right help and good advice rarely come unless you seek them out. I was lucky. Help came to me when I wasn't even looking for it, in the form of a lock on the fridge. I'm giving you good advice and you must seek help if you feel you can't handle your cravings on your own. I'm sharing my story with you because I believe you can take control of your life too. How much clothing have you accumulated that you once loved wearing, but can't fit into anymore? You can't imagine the joy of putting on something that's been sitting in a suitcase on the top shelf for 15 years, something that was too precious to throw away when you realized you couldn't squeeze your expanding body into that amazing outfit. What do you see when you look in the mirror? How do you feel when you get up from your chair? How many times a day do you open the fridge door? If the weight keeps increasing and snacking has become a habit, it's time to take the first step. It always seems difficult. But things are rarely as bad as they seem. Who knows? You might even enjoy this path as much as I did. I never would have believed that at 70 years old, I'd go to the gym with pleasure and wouldn't leave until I'd used my favorite machines. By the way, now I enjoy working out every day for 45 to 50 minutes. Leave your comments. Share your impressions of visiting the gym. See you at the gym.